Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have the first video in what will probably be a series uh, on Apache Hootie, um, which is how to get started with Apache Hootie for a data lake platform. Um, so Hootie is kind of the alternative to Apache Iceberg, I would say. Um, and it's got some advantages, it's got some trade-offs from Apache Iceberg, uh, but generally just kind of a cool platform that, and it's open source as well, so love that. But it's a cool open source you know, data management framework that gives you a way to manage large scale data lakes. So maybe if you aren't satisfied with Apache Iceberg, you don't like the way that works, try checking out Apache Hootie. Um, and just to start, Apache Hootie stands for Hadoop Upserts and Incrementals. Um, and its main purpose is to enable users to perform updates, deletes, and upserts on really large data sets efficiently, which is a challenge in you know, traditional data lake architectures, and was really designed at the core to handle those complexities that come with big data storage and then processing them on distributed systems. So what I'm gonna do first is give you a quick primer how it works, and then I'll show you also how you can get started and talk a little bit about some of the advantages um, of using Apache Hootie. So without further ado, let's get into it. So now what I have up on the screen is just kind of a breakdown of the typical Hootie stack. Uh, and most of what we're gonna talk about is this in this transactional database layer where Hootie lives. Obviously you have an API, you have formats, you have a user interface as well but a lot of the value that Apache provides is in some of the functionality it provides in this transactional data lace layer at the core. Um, so Apache Hootie manages data at the file level and then gives you some different functionalities that'll go through that allow for the efficient data ingestion, storage, and then querying of that data. And there, within there, there's a few key components in, in concepts. Um, so, Number one, there's two kind of main table types um, within Patch Hootie. So you, in first, you have copy on write, or cal. Uh, and in this approach, Hootie writes data to a new version of the file during updates. So whenever you add or change anything, that old version gets replaced whenever that write is complete. And then this ensures that any reads are consistent and then unaffected by any ongoing writes. And the second approach, the contrast that is merge on read more, uh, and this approach allows for separation of data ingestion and compaction types, where new records are then written to Delta files and the base files are compacted asynchronously. And so this supports real, uh, near real-time analytics by merging base and Delta files during reads. So you essentially have a Delta file that tells you the changes, but then you have a base file that's compacted um, you know, at, a, at a separate time more efficiently. So real-time analytics, when you want to query that data, it's going to merge those base and Delta files so you can read them at runtime. Then you also within uh, Hootie is you have Hootie uses indexing at its core to manage records efficiently. And this indexing mechanism helps you to, to locate the files where records are stored um, and ensures quick access and updates. And some different indexing strategies like Bloom filters and global indices are built into Hootie and can be employed based on the use case. So you have additional granularity and flexibility in how you want to index your data. Then you also have Hootie's commit protocol. Now, Hootie is able to maintain ACID compliance, which stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. If you don't know what those mean, check my video on it. Um, but it maintains compliance to those standards by using a commit protocol that records every action, every insert, every update, every delete as a commit. And then every commit is also tracked in a timeline, so you can ensure that your data integrity is maintained even during concurrent operations. Fourth, in the more table type, Compaction is also a crucial process uh, where Delta files are merged with base files to optimize storage and improve read performance. And compaction can be scheduled based on specific criteria to balance the trade-off between you know, being able to write that really quickly and then also not needing to merge super large Delta files with super large base files because you haven't merged them in a month um, when you're trying to read it. So supporting better read efficiency as well. Um, and then fifth, you also have better incremental pulls. Huddy supports incremental pulls, which allow users to fetch only the data that's changed since the last pull. And this is particularly useful for building ETL pipelines and reducing the load in the system by avoiding those full heavy data scans that you would have to do otherwise. Um, and then sixth, you have an efficient way and a graceful way to manage scheme evolution with Hootie. It allows for the addition and modification of fields without disrupting ongoing operations. So ensuring data consistency is maintained even while you're changing the schema and making alterations, um, allowing you to do that kind of in place is really powerful. 
Now, that's how Hootie works, but you know, that's all of a bunch of technical jargon and it doesn't give you any advantages. So I also want to talk about what are some of the advantages of Apache Hootie here. Number one, you have efficient data ingestion. You know, traditional data lakes, they struggle with the ingestion of large volumes of data, especially if there's updates or deletes involved. And Hootie is able to optimize this process by allowing for efficient upserts, uh, which means you know, upserts, updates and inserts, and deletes. And this capability is really crucial for use cases like change data capture and real-time analytics, where you need to be able to ingest and then transform the really large amounts of data. Um, second, you have improved query performance. Hootie's compaction and indexing mechanisms ensure that query performance is really well optimized by default. And by maintaining indices and merging Delta files with base files, Hootie also reduces the time required for query execution, which makes it suitable for you know, interactive and batch analytics. Uh, third, scalability. Hootie is designed at the base level to work with distributed storage systems like HDFS, Amazon S3, Google Cloud Storage. It's really, really highly scalable and to the point of being able to handle you know, petabytes of data and scale out horizontally as the data volume grows without compromising on performance. You can start small and grow that over time. And then fourth, data consistency and integrity. Now, what this means is that Hootie's commit protocol ensures that all operations are atomic and consistent. So users are always gonna get a consistent view of the data, even if there's ongoing writes. And this is really critical for applications that require that reliable and accurate data. Uh, this is gonna happen at the core just by leveraging Hootie because it has that commit protocol. Fifth, we have cost efficiency. By enabling those incremental pulls, efficient data storage management, Hootie is able to reduce the storage and compute costs associated with data processing, where users can process only the change data instead of needing to scan entire data sets, which can help lead to pretty significant cost savings. Um, and then sixth, seamless integrations. Hootie integrates well with pretty much every big data ecosystem out there, you know, Spark, Hive, Presto, whatever. Uh, this allows organizations and you, know, you to leverage your existing tools and workflows while still being able to benefit from Hootie's advanced capabilities. Um, and then finally, the flexibility of Hootie. Uh, with support for both those cow and more table types, Hootie provides flexibility in choosing the right approach based on specific requirements. So you can opt for the cow model for simpler use cases or the more model for those more complex near real-time analytics scenarios. Um, and so just kind of in conclusion here before I show you how to get started setting up a Hootie environment, really just look at Hootie as you know, a pretty significant advancement in the management of large scale data lakes. It's able to address those challenges of efficient data ingestion, query performance, data consistency, and enable organizations to really build robust and scalable data platforms. Uh, but that's enough talking about it. Let's actually get into it. Um, and so to get started, what you can do uh, if you want to follow along is go over to the docs here um, and go to the, one of the quick starts. In my case, I'm going to use the Spark quick start, but there's also a Flink quick start and a Docker demo. Um, actually, I'm going to use the Docker demo one. So I'm going to follow this along, but uh, yeah, follow along whatever one you uh, would like to think is best for your computer. And the first step is actually just going to be cloning this repository for your computer, no matter how you're doing it. So go to github.com uh, patchy slash hootie and then it'll download a quick zip file and then open it up wherever you want to store it in directory and then I'll meet you in the code editor of your choice with the terminal window open. Actually, the Docker build requires installing Maven, which I don't have, so I'm not gonna do that. I am going to go back to just actually setting up uh, kind of via the Python quick Spark quick start. Um, so first, what we will do is export Python PySpark version. Um, and then we'll set our Spark version to 3.5. Then, hey, Datadog. Then we'll get the Datadog up here for a guest appearance. What's up, Datadog? Here we go. And he's gonna come watch us as well. Um, so here, make, uh, we don't have PySpark, so let me install PySpark real quick. So after PySpark is installed, you'll get something like this, and I'll meet you once it's done running. And now we have a PySpark environment we can work with for Hootie. So first we're gonna do is import some imports and set up the table name and base path. So here we're gonna paste all this into the terminal. PySpark, set that base path. And then here, let's go, boom. 
Um, and let's see, does this work? Awesome. Um, and so then what we'll do is initialize, run some data. So paste this one line. Boom. So here, this is creating a table with uh, some drivers, their fares. Uh, and then what you can do is query the data. Um, so this is actually how you create a Hootie table. Um, so what you're doing here is creating it with that insert right format. Uh, you can see Hootie, the options there as well, see the data. Um, and really the, the power comes in how you're storing this and, and, and saving it. Um, so making it easier to query when it's at large scale. So you know something like this isn't going to be super interesting where here it's, you know, not, it's, yeah, let me paste this all as one block. Um, so one moment here. Um, paste this one line. Actually, no, there, one second. Um, but yeah, so, so I actually, I'll actually dedicate a whole separate video to this because um, I think it'll be more helpful uh, in doing a real-world use case. But just want to show you how you can get started using it. So Hootie is really just a back-end format for something like Spark, something like Flink. Um, so that's how you're going to want to use it, is just setting it up to use the Hootie format. Make sure you have this Hootie kind of master directory installed so you have everything accessible. And that's it. It's an open source product. Um, so I'll have a more kind of complex video out later on how to get set up and how to really uh, you know, use this in kind of a production-esque environment. But hope this is enough to get the mind going and the brain tickling uh, and hope to see you come around here soon. But have a great rest of your day. Data guy, data dog, out.